insects in general can cause lots of problems uh, to humans. Mosquitoes in particular. Mosquitoes kill about 750,000 people every year from spreading diseases to them. So mosquitoes are actually the worst animal on the planet in terms of how many humans they kill every year, even if you include other humans. So like mosquitoes kill more people than wars do. Um, and so again, they're spreading all kinds of diseases like malaria, filariasis, which is elephantiasis, onchocerciasis, Zika, dengue, uh, yellow fever, all kinds of nasty diseases are spread by mosquitoes. And so the interesting thing about this project is when you normally write a grant for mosquitoes, you say, hey, I'm a specialist, I work on this particular disease and I want to stop this disease. This project has the potential to stop all mosquito-borne diseases. Uh, this is a War Needle Knitting Lab. That's the title we get it, or we gave it, War Eagle, War Needle, you know, uh, <laughs> The laboratory was funded through the state of Alabama, and our goal was to essentially rebuild manufacturing processes for research textiles in the state of Alabama. So we have built here a lab with three different unique machines that help us iterate and prototype different novel knitted garments that we then further downstream test for their ability to block mosquito bites. I am John Beckman, Professor John Beckman, Dr. John Beckman. <laughs> I'm an assistant professor at Auburn University in the Department of Entomology and Plant Pathology. There were a couple things that I knew that I knew I wanted. Again, I wanted a project that was that was sort of easy for me to test. And I knew that in the laboratory, I, I work on mosquitoes as kind of like my broad focus. So we were maintaining a culture of Aedes aegypti mosquitoes. Aedes aegypti is a tropical mosquito. We do have it here in southern Alabama. You see it in southern Florida, you see it in Texas. Um, and it spreads dengue, Zika virus, yellow fever, all the nasty things that mosquitoes spread, uh, Aedes aegypti usually has a part in that. So Aedes aegypti is kind of like um, one of the worst human mosquitoes that, that transmits diseases to us. It's also the easiest to culture because it likes human blood, so it's really easy to maintain a colony of Aedes aegypti mosquitoes in the lab. And the easiest way to feed Aedes aegypti mosquitoes is to just put your arm in the cage. I have institutional approval, so it's all, it's all good, it's all kosher. Um, but I, can, I just put my arm in the cage, and so I would have to do this every, every week, whatever, to feed the mosquitoes to maintain the colony. So my thought was, again, like, I, I need a project that I can just, every time I'm doing that, it's gonna be giving me data. So I thought, okay, well, every time I put my arm in the cage, I'll just put a sleeve on, and I'll see if they can bite through the sleeve. So that's how we started collecting preliminary data, is just, just rearing mosquitoes, putting our arm in the cage, um, and then seeing if they can bite through. And it turned out like every single sleeve that we would put on our hand, they would literally bite through. So I was kind of shocked to see that we were, you weren't really getting any kind of protection whatsoever from long sleeve shirts. So that sort of um, built, that was the preliminary data that justified really the research need again for the project. So we discovered in that preliminary screen that all the weaves that we tested uh, did not block mosquito bites, but there were a few knits that did block mosquito bites pretty well. So I knew right away we wanted to head towards, track towards knitting away from weaving. A knit is a different way to manufacture textiles. It's a, it's a loop that you then recursively loop through the other loop. So the structure is different, and they're actually, they do have different physical properties. So weaves are known to be very, they, they're very tight and restrictive. They're not very stretchable. Knits are not like that. Knits are very stretchable because again, the loop builds in sort of like a, a natural flexibility. So certain things about knits is that they can, they can compress tighter, which is why I think they're blocking the mosquito bites better. And they're also more comfortable, they're more form fitting and they're stretchable. You initially first start with um, the raw material. And if it's like cotton or hemp, you spin it out in a spinning wheel. Or if it's, a, if it's a polymer, you melt it in what's called an extruder and they pull out these fine, thin filaments. Okay, that's the first step. Then the second step is making yarns where you take multiple filaments and you can wrap them together in different geometries to make yarns. And that brings in where the thread twister comes in, which is the function of that machine is to make novel yarns with uh, different fiber inputs in different geometries. Like you could wrap around a yarn, an internal yarn like a coil, or you could twist yarns together. Um, it can do a lot of different things. My name is Richard and I am a first year PhD student here in the War Needle Knitting Lab. 
and I'm the thread master as well as a yo-yo expert on the side. This is our AgTech thread twister machine. And essentially what we do is we spin two different yarns together to make a twist, a coil, essentially changing the type of thread that we have at our end product. Right down here, what we see is we have a polyester and we have a nylon string. I'm twisting them together. This way we'll have different strength, we'll have different tension as well as stretch. And as you can see up here, we've got this nice crisscross pattern of our twisted string. I'm gonna run it real quick just to show you how it works. So right now we're feeding the two yarns through and we're twisting them into a single thread. So here we just have an example of different twists and different coils, as well as different materials from an all polyester twist to mixes of nylon and polyester, and then different types of strings, thickness, or yarns in their thickness. And the whole purpose of this is eventually we're gonna wanna run this through our flatbed machine to make sure that whatever work fabric we're gonna make has the best properties, whether it's the strongest it can be, have the best tension or the best stretch. And one good way to do that is to mix and match our yarns and any different combination that we can to get that product. Then once you have the yarn, the yarn can feed into the knitting machines. The flatbed has kind of like a, a, a angular, triangular shaped bed of needles, and it can do two different types of knits. It can do a front knit or a back knit. So think about like pulling a loop towards you or pulling a loop away from you. So the, the knitting machine is gonna start by loading yarns into the machine. Essentially, there's two components of loading the yarn that are important for controlling the tension. Brian's gonna kind of talk about the mechanisms. Uh, hi, my name is Brian. I'm a master's student in biosystems engineering uh, and I do research for the entomology department for Dr. Beckman. Uh, and I'm in charge of the Stoll flatbed knitting machine. Um, I took Dr. Beckman's class uh, a year ago and I drew a picture of a mosquito and I have it tattooed on my arm. So you may have seen me before. This is my mosquito tattoo. It was featured in the magazine, Brian and his bug tattoo. I'm very proud of it. So these are the MSFs and they pretty much uh, are like a stop motion for if the yarn ever gets caught, it's gonna stop the, uh, the machine. That way the yarn doesn't break and you don't have to re-thread it. So if this right here ever stops winding up the yarn, the machine's gonna stop, I'll have to come through, figure out why the yarn is getting stuck, fix it, and then clear the air and run the machine again. Um, and then once the yarn goes through the MSF, it comes through these little tension machines right here. And what they do is if it detects any sort of knots or impurities in this inside of the yarn. So this will trip, the red light will come on, it'll stop the machine again. I'll fix whatever error has occurred, and then I'll start running the machine again. So the next stage of the machine is to load a program that I will have made on the computer. I'll save it to a USB drive, um, I'll put it in the side, and then I'll load the machine, I'll start the production of it, and then I'll lift the red bar. Um, and then the carriage will go back and forth, it'll grab the yarn, and it'll start knitting. This is the, this is the cam I was talking about. So this is the cam that goes back and forth and in there, you can actually open up the can, but this is what's pushing the needles up and down. It's crazy what humans can build. I know. <laughs> so typically, if I'm making something that's gonna be made into a full sleeve, it'll take about 20 minutes for it to completely make it. Um, so whenever I make something small, uh, like a, just a small square like this, it only takes about five to 10 minutes for it to come off the machine. Um, in a situation where I'm making something like this, I just am looking to see what the program looks like once it comes off the machine to see if it will block mosquito bites or if I think it will, or if the machine's able to run it well. Sometimes when I make small squares like this, I'll see errors and I can figure out if I'm running it too tight without making something really big and just waiting all that time to figure out that it's messed up. So then we make these sleeves and Alexa makes these sleeves over here. My name is Alexa England. I'm a master's student in biosystem engineering and I'm in Dr. Beckman's lab. I'm in charge of making all the prototypes and then also testing them with thermal conductivity and then breathability. I did my undergrad at Mississippi State and got two degrees in biological science and fashion design product development and then two minors in chemistry and art. And that actually makes me perfect for this project because I'm able to do the wet lab and science sides of things, but then also I know how to do the fashion and creating garments. Okay, so Brian will knit 
some fabric out and then he'll give it to me. And this is a finished sleeve. I would just take the sleeve over here and I'll cut it. I have this pattern. That's Brian's size and Kyle's size actually. I'll just cut it out and then come over here to a sewing machine. First, I'll serge the end of it. So serging is from this machine and serging actually just takes the excess fabric off and will prevent it from fraying. And then I would go in and sew this together on a side seam. And then I would go back to this machine and serge the excess off again. Textiles go into the cars that the cars that you drive in, they go into airplanes that fly. Um, they go into, in, in terms of agriculture, like there's all kinds of applications of spreading textiles over your crops to protect them from insects. So there's all kinds of applications for textiles in horticulture, engineering, aerospace engineering, many different diverse fields. And so these machines, while they're definitely useful for our project, they can also be useful for many other projects. So yeah. what is next? One of the things we thought about doing was actually one of the, we haven't yet done this, but one of one of the things that we were trying to do originally when we first started this project was um, do like microscopic knitting. So like I thought about hiring a student to get microscopic needles and microscopic threads and literally like knit microscopic like uh, knits. I haven't done yet that yet, but uh, we might get to that point. So there's a lot of different um, variables that go into creating these knits that can block. And now that we have some, now our next goal is to try to make those things super comfortable so that there's something that somebody really wants to wear if it's 100 degrees outside uh, to protect themselves from mosquitoes. We definitely have a very diverse group of students that come in with different backgrounds and different expertise. We've built this team of people who know a lot of things about different subjects, which I think is gonna to contribute to the success of the project.